and welcome to the Cricket Nerds podcast. Um, I'm your host, James. <laughs> uh, I'm joined by Benji. How are you doing, Benji? I'm really good, thanks, James. Um, good week of IPL cricket and I'm excited to have a chat about it. Me too. And how are you doing, Zach? Yeah, I'm good, thanks. How are you doing? Yeah, pretty good. I imagine me and you are doing a quite a lot better than Benji after the first four games. Some yeah. very good results. <laughs> Not a great week for a Chennai fan, but uh, we move, we move. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, we're going to just do a little rundown on the first four games, see what we've learned. Um, Zach, I'll let you kick off with, with your enjoyable uh, session of the first game, Mumbai versus RCB. Well, you said, what have we learned? And I think what we've learned is our predictions are completely off. <laughs> <laughs> Mumbai, strongest team, get beaten in the first game. Um, Harshal Patel is now my new favourite player. <laughs> I, I think I'm going to get one of the... The next RCB shirt I get is going to have his name on the back of it. Um, I just wasn't expecting it, really. Like, I I, I knew we'd have a chance. Um, but, yeah, the, I just wasn't expecting us to pull that one out of the bag, really. I can't lie. I'm a little bit salty that Glenn Maxwell, after his dismal performance at uh, I, IPL 2020, where he didn't hit a single six, then hits a hundred meter six onto the roof of the stadium, and then does a switch hit six. It was just a bit. It's a bit of an insult, to be honest. But yeah, it, oh, that was an amazing performance. Um, I mean, before we dive too much into RCB, a um, couple of. I mean, there was only really one standout performance um, from Mumbai, which was Chris Lynn. So, what do we think about Chris Lynn as like a replacement for for Quinton de, Quinton de Kock? Well, at the start of his innings, he was really, he really was scratchy, wasn't he? He just couldn't get going. Like, I, quite a lot of hacks. He's kind of hitting himself into form, really. And yeah, when he got going, it was pretty impressive uh, how how he's able to just destroy bowling. I agree. I think he, he offers quite a good um, replacement for Quinton de Kock, especially because Ishan Kishan can be wicketkeeper as well. Mm. So you don't actually need de Kock to Kock f- to fill that role. But um, I think if de Kock is on his day, he's better than Chris Lee on his day. Yeah. What do you think? I think so too, that's that's for sure. Um, I mean, RCB sent out performances. Zach, do you think Kyle Jameson is worth the price tag? Oh yeah, definitely. Like I'll, I'll always say this. I think that the price tag, I know it can put pressure on the overseas players um, or the players that go for a lot of money, but I do think that if you've got a role to fill, if you've got the money to spend, which RCB did, it doesn't really matter how much they have to spend for Jameson. We got the man we wanted. And I think he looks like he could smack a few and he got, well, his economy rate was below seven, which is what we need really for a death bowler. I, what, and what? I mean, the standout performance really, it, it was really the AB de Villiers show, wasn't it really? Mm. Um, yeah. Doing what AB de Villiers does. Um, I, th- I think his innings really, you know, um, cemented um, challengers chase down, um, but at the start of the innings, what did you think about Washington Sundar and um, Virat Kohli opening? Well, I was looking forward to seeing uh, Rajat Patidar open um, because he's an exciting young talent, and they sent Washington, which I was I was kind of excited for. I was thinking, yeah, that's a good idea. He's a good batsman, and then he gets. Strato below 100 is, yeah, not great. I thought it was a bit bizarre, to be honest. I think he might open for some of his domestic games. But, yeah, when you've got someone like Patidar, who potentially could be quite explosive, mm. I thought it was a bit of a shame. Um, especially because Sundar offers that little bit of stability lower down in the order, which, you know, kind of Shabazz Ahmed didn't really offer. Nor did um, Christian. <laughs> Dan Christian, your boy Dan Christian, the love of your life. Disappointed, yeah. to say the least. He was a bit unlucky, though. I think his wicket was like a, he absolutely nailed the ball and he just happened to nail it at the person. Mm. Yeah, it was it, it, it was unfortunate. Um, mm. But, you know, I, I think challengers look really strong, really. Um, Coley leading from the top. I mean, one standout thing from this whole week has been the quality of the fielding. I mean, Coley dropped a catch. There was quite a few drop catches this week. Um, so yeah it'll, it'll, it'll be interesting to see how that pans out of course we're only in week one of the IPL everyone's only played once 
so we can't be, you know, jumping to too many conclusions. Um, any Chennai fan would say that after this week's performance. Um, yeah. <laughs> but, you know. should, we, should we jump into that game then? That was the next one, wasn't it? Yeah, so CSK versus Delhi. Um, yeah, I mean, disappointed um, a little bit. I think Delhi um, really showed their <laughs> class um, against uh, CSK. I thought Chennai, though, actually played quite well. Um, aside from, you know, our top order, I, Guy Quad was out to a really good delivery by Chris Wokes. And, I mean, Faf Duplessis has really been struggling for, for form of late um, for both South Africa um, and Chennai de, and, and um, in the Abu Dhabi T10 too. Um but yeah, what 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 do you guys think? Did did you think that you know Chennai looked like Dad's army as they've sort of been um been been branded? I think that they need they need uh, someone at the top of that order to support Guy Quad. And I know Duke because he's experienced. But what you were saying about him not having been in form, I think that's definitely true. They need. I just think they're lacking that depth at the top of the order. Um, what 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 are the thoughts on 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 Sam Curran opening with Guy Quad, um, knowing it three and then sort of Faf making way for Jason Berendorf maybe to inject that bit of pace because again Chennai's bowling at the start of the innings wasn't anything to write home about either. Um, I think that you know Chahar and Dakur really did struggle. I think I think it's an interesting idea. Um, I don't know how much I like Sam Curran opening. To be honest, I, I know he did it a bit last year. I feel like someone like Suresh Reina, who is like, you know, he proved that he didn't have the, the ring rust from not playing for two years. Mm. He was class and he looked comfortable and consistent. And I feel like someone like Suresh Reina would be a lot better opening um, with Guy Quad. And then you've got Ali at that number three, where he looked absolutely class. Yeah. So speaking of Moeen, I mean, he looked like a different player, didn't he, from the. Um recent series that he's been involved in I think he really did suit that 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 number three spot um I mean his bowling he didn't um really have anything to write home about he, he, he bowled three overs for sort of an economy rate of 11 which isn't fantastic <clears throat> I mean the pick of the bowlers was was, was was actually Dwayne Bravo with his four overs um going at about seven and, and over um but I mean, do we see sort of Dwayne Bravo staying in that setup, especially with 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 Ngidi, um becoming available in in the next couple of weeks? Well, they're using Dwayne Bravo as a bowler. Like Dwayne Bravo has been Chennai's finisher for years, mm. and they, I think Chennai, I think Sam Curran came in at eight, and Dwayne Bravo didn't get a bat. Um, yes, so, right. yeah, it's it's. <laughs> Although he bowled really well, I definitely think there is a space available. And I think for Cheno, it will be seeing, can we get that balance right? Because if you shift Dwayne Bravo up a spot, then that potentially fills that hole of, okay, well, we can get rid of Duplessis and put Suresh Reiner or maybe Ambati Raidu in that opening slot with Gaikwad. And then you can bump all your middle order batsmen up one. And that probably presents a better balance than they had. I mean, uh, one thing that did, you know, shine through for Chennai, which was quite a positive, was in that first game, I mean, they batted well all the way down to their number 10. Like, I think with, with the exception of Deepak Jahar, every member of that team had hit a T2050 at some point. Um, so, it's, it, it, yeah, it it does show some, some real depth. Um, I think what, what Chennai were missing, though, was was that sort of one forty k's bowler, so you Jason Berendorf, you're in Gidi. So I think it's 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 really interesting what what Dhoni's going to be doing with with the team, especially with with those two guys um, um, becoming available. I just think they also came up against a very strong team. Like yeah, Delhi. just 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 to speak a bit about Delhi though. So it was a real like you know. The the apprentice has become the master type of affair, wasn't it? With with Rishabh Pant, um, you know, captain in Delhi to to their first um, win. I mean, Prithvi Shaw and Shikhar Darwin looked 
absolutely class. I, I mean, James, what do you think about sort of the Delhi's um, Delhi's play in 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 that first game? Yeah, I I was really impressed. I thought I think we actually uh, we got a little bit of a prediction right on that. Um, I think I'm pretty sure we mentioned in the first podcast how Prithvi Shaw's had a really good domestic season, mm. and it showed his form was absolutely class. He was back to the the Prithvi Shaw of 2019. Um, mm. I really liked that Chris Wokes got a play. Yeah, I, I, it was really good to see him um, bowling again. I think it was the first time since he, the World Cup that he actually played. So uh, didn't he play a game in the Ashes in 2019? Maybe. And he definitely um, played um, in one of the series last summer, I believe. Um, one of the series in in, in England. It was a long time ago that he last played. Yeah. Um, Tom Curran, we were absolutely right about waste of space. Don't. <laughs> blame him. Um, I, if he gets a place in the England squad for the World Cup, I'll be pretty sad, I think, because hmm. we've got so many good bowlers. Like you know, Reese Topley is just Tom Curran but better. <laughs> Um, it's 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 interesting what you say about sort of Chris Wokes. The the other you know standout bowler was 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 Avesh Khan too. Like those two as an opening partnership in the bowling were, were were fantastic. They took two really early wickets. Wokes looked absolutely class on 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 top form. I mean with Rabada and Norkia missing out, that's a real good you know bench to have, isn't it? Really with 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 Khan and Wokes. Do we think that Zach maybe that 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 um, Rabada and Norkir might might struggle for a spot, um, or or at least if they're not firing off, might have to be looking over their shoulder with with you know Wokes and 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 Avesh Khan bowling like that. Well, the one person that stands out to me is Shimron Hetmyer. Um, I, it's a risk because if you think about Delhi, um, they're batting really with Prithvi Shaw, Shikhar and Rishabh Pant, Marcus Stoinis occupying those first four places and then potentially a Jinky Rahani coming in if they've got a top order clapped if they lose two wickets early. And that batting lineup looks pretty good. Mm. And you could have Chris Wokes in the middle order. He's a proven one day good batsman. Ravi Ashwin, he can bat. Uh, Tom Curran can bat, although I think he'll miss out when Rabada and Nokia come back. But there you could leave out that middle order hitter, that middle order overseas batsman. And you could potentially see a bowling trio of Rabada, Wokes and Norkia, which if you think about that, that looks pretty impressive, especially with Avesh Khan as that Indian talent going under six and over. Uh, they've got a very good bowling attack. They always have. And I would say it's the best in the competition after that first performance. But obviously, time will tell. I'm, I mean, in the past, Delhi have really struggled with fight, finding that third bowler. So with having Norkir and Rabada always bowling well, they've always struggled to, to find that that third bowler. We can't talk about the Delhi game without, you know, talking about how satisfying it was to see Moen Ali dispatch Ravi Ashwin to every corner of the ground um, <laughs> before, you know, miscuing one um, straight to a fielder. Um, but no, I think the, the Delhi game was, was, was really enjoyable. Um, Delhi looked like a real force to be reckoned with and, and there's some definite learning points for 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 Chennai, um, showing a little bit of promise. I think. Yeah, one last thing I want to look at with um, with Delhi really quickly is just Rishabh Pant's strike rate, 125. Mm. Now Rishabh Pant has not batted a strike rate of that pitiful <laughs> low for you know the last however long. Um, barely in the Test matches was he that low, <laughs> and you know he. I'm I'm wondering if you guys think that might be a little burden of captaincy right there. Could be him being a bit more um a bit more conservative. I mean, yeah. I know that he was with uh was he with Darwin at the time? Yeah. He was absolutely batsman. Um so m- maybe he was just rotating the strike like that. But I mean yeah, I th- I think um I mean Pan he he wasn't playing his normal shots. Um and I think that was because of the position that you know Pretty sure in Chikadown had 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 got Delhi into. He, he he wasn't really playing all of his normal shots, um, and was playing a bit more sensible. Again, it's the first week of the season. We 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 can't really be judging drawing too many conclusions um, from that. Right, so, talk, he, does go from, he does go from ball one. 
usually. Um, and there might have been that thought of there isn't that much batting to come. I'm the captain. I need to take some responsibility. I need to see it home uh, rather than winning it with five overs to spare. Um, but yeah, yeah I, I think it quite, yeah. Who knows? Richard Pant's a great batsman. Yeah. yeah. We'll, we'll see if it affects his game too much. So I want to talk about uh, KKR versus Sunrisers now because uh, one, one, of, one of the fans of the show, uh, KKR fan, is, uh, has taken the mick out of us. Uh, <laughs> For, for getting our our, our sort of assessment yeah. of Polka to Knight Riders uh, lineup completely wrong. We didn't they... really hit the nail on the head there, did we? Well, I think what we said is their weakness is their top order batting, and Nitish Rana and Rahul Tripathi kind of shut us up. Yeah. Uh, 80 off 56 for Rana and 53 off 29 for Tripathi. I think that kind of, yeah. But. One thing that we did say, which we kind of predicted, is the reliance on their, on Owen Morgan and Andre Russell in the middle. Mm. Um, that Cole Cutter at one stage, if Andre Russell and Owen Morgan fired, could have been looking at two hundred plus. Yeah. So. I, know, they just... I think it was really D- 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 Dinesh Karthik that really saved that innings. Really, um, mm. uh, with just striking at two hundred and forty-four. Um, at the end of that of that innings i thought what was quite notable about what kkr did is you know we predicted that they might be sticking to that you know same old formula of um you know opening with 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 sunil on the rhine sunil on the rhine wasn't even in in the squad so maybe where teams like chennai have sort of fallen to, by the wayside in, in sort of sticking to that old system it seems like KKR have, have sort of learned from that, and 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 with Owen Morgan sort of leading from the front from from week one, um, and 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 changing that team up, it's 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 really uh, it's, it's it's interesting to see where where that goes. I uh, I think we all really enjoyed the fact that David Warner went out so early. Oh yeah, yeah. <laughs> I was I was gutted when Pat Cummings dropped the catch of David Warner on a duck. Um, but yeah, then he he went out after three, so that felt good. I was I was very happy about that. Yeah. Speaking about sunrises, um, Bhuvaneshwar Kumar had a bit of a stinker, didn't he? Where where was that Bhuvi in the England series? <laughs> and Natarajan, like although he got a wicket, he went at nine point two five. Yeah, it, and I think. We did get right though about the um, Sunrisers bowling was Rashid Khan. Like the wizard class. was absolutely top class, six and over, taking two wickets. Um, I mean, we, like that man is unplayable, isn't he? Like something else. Like with with leg spin, you generally expect your leg spinner they're they're going to bleed a few runs, but they're going to get you wickets. Like you look at Yuzvendra Chahal for yep. RB. You can most of the time rely on him for a f- couple of wickets, but he's not going to be your most economical bowler. But Rashid Khan is is your most economical yeah. uh, bowler, and he'll guarantee to take your wickets. He's unbelievable. And the other uh, Afghan spinner, Mohammed Nabi, mm. he, he was class as well. You know, for for an old boy, he did very well in the. In the in the bowling department, not so much. Oh, you, you did okay in batting as well. How are they going to fit in Jason Holder? I just... <laughs> uh, and it's, it's, I, I think there's a real struggle there with 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 Warner and Bairstow almost having to play, um, possibly swapping them out for for um, Kane Williamson or, or or Jason Roy. But yeah, that that bowling attack from. From Sunrisers wasn't really up to scratch as as as, as we thought it would be, um, and I think they they struggled there a bit. Um, fantastic knock from Manesh Pandey. I think that was one element of that game that we got right <laughs> that Manesh Pandey will score runs, um, and Johnny Bairstow batting at four. Now, what are your guys' thoughts on 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 that? And I I know it's been doing it a bit recently, but but. Do you think it was wise for some risers to to go away from that formula that sort of worked for them for so long? I don't think so. Either of you. Uh, 
I, I don't think so. I think uh, Johnny Bairstow sitting at four is the best, probably best thing for him at the moment. Um, from a selfish English point of view, that's where he's going to be batting for England because if you think about all the top order players we've got, so him playing at four for um, Sunrise is really good. And in the 2020 series against India, he batted at four throughout. He didn't have any scores of note, but he was kind of con- he was consistent. And I think that's what you get with Johnny Bairstow. Mm-hmm. And Sunrise is in that middle order, whether it's Johnny Bairstow or Kane Williamson, you'll get consistency. And I think they've got Johnny Bairstow just because he probably strikes the ball at a quicker rate than Kane Williamson. Yeah, I agree. Right, let's talk about the best game. Oh, that's you, you, you've been bursting for this, haven't you, the whole time? <laughs> I've been itching for it. I was watching it today and, oh, it was a nerve-wracking end. <laughs> Punjab Kings versus Rajasthan Royals. Um, one thing I can say straight off the bat, we have not fixed our bowling problems. <laughs> Riley Meredith, what a start. Four <laughs> fours. Oh, goodness. <laughs> the, the, uh, so I'll just read out what the bowling stats for our two. Uh, but uh, bear in mind, we spent around two and a half million, one and a half, two and a half million dollars on these two uh, Australian fast bowlers. And they returned figures of um, 55 for one off four and uh, 49 for one off four. Yes. That's just not good. At an economy so, of 13.75 and 12.25. Yeah, so I'm really hoping they, they sort of accustom themselves to the Indian conditions. This is the first time they're bowled in India. So, you know, it's, it's completely different. Um, they need to learn. Uh, one of the things that struck me with Riley Meredith, he didn't bowl a straight line once. Mm. He was bowling these bouncers that were, you know, sort of going up and across. Um, and they were just getting pinged away. So I think... That might be a little bit of a learning curve and hopefully they can do that in the training. Um, but, and, you know, similar story with the bowling of Rajasthan. I think they had eight different bowlers. Yeah. Let's, let's not forget, though, that, um, that you know, it's the first time Jaya Richard and Riley Meredith have bowled in India for, for, for some time. Maybe ever. I'm not quite sure on those two facts. Um, and, and also that that Mumbai track was a road, like like the pitch that they were bowling on was was extremely favourable for the batsman, um, and I mean you could just see that from the way that Kara Hall was striking the ball, I mean ninety one off fifty balls, it, it he's almost you know picking up exactly where he was last year, um, actually hitting a lot quicker than he was last year as well. Um, I think now that we've bolstered that middle order, he's yeah. a lot more to bat and um our batting coach Wasim Jaffa uh he was saying that he wants Kale Rahul to bat a lot more aggressively this year because he kind of he kind of ate a lot of um a lot of the deliveries last year and he, he wasn't you know so, out, out of power play he wasn't actually the best person to be in. Um but yeah he, he was really good and the standout player definitely was Sanju Sampson. He was oh absolutely ridiculous what do you think zach yeah it was just destructive um all the way through uh to get to 119 in a losing cause is not it's not great for him obviously as, as well as being captain um but i just thought like going back to what you were saying about the bowlers um i know like they scored loads of runs but there were some standouts from the indian bowlers so if you think about uh rajasthan they had that Sakaria, who is a net yeah. bowler or was a net bowler, three for 31, bowl, bowling at 7.75 and over compared to everyone else who was over 10. Um, and then if you look at the Rajasthan Royals innings, Shami, two for 33, Arshdeep Singh, who I thought was very impressive oh. in that last over. Like he won the game for... Yeah. If it, wasn't, if it wasn't for his like cool, calm head, it would have been that would have been it. Sanjay Sampson would have been scoring the win. It was absolutely Rajasthan's game. Um, oh, yeah. They had it in the bag. And Arshdeep Singh was just... It, he was just unplayable. It was really, really impressive. One thing that um, was absolutely terrible from Sanju Sampson 
was the second to last ball of the innings. Um, he turned down a single. Mm. So they needed five off two. Chris Morris was at the other end and he turned down the single. He said, no, I've got this. I'm going to get six from the last ball. And he got caught on the boundary. Now, that for me was, oh, it, it was a terrible decision because I think if you if you can't back the most expensive signing of IPL history to hit a boundary from the last ball, then why buy him? <laughs> yeah, I mean, Chris Morris, do we think, you know, he lived up to that price tag? I mean, not, not you know, being able to bat that last ball. Um, and also, you know, some, you know, the bowling figures, not really anything to, to write home about. Took a couple of wickets, but an economy of, of, of over 10 and over. And, and to be honest, that was still put him as to one of the best bowling performances um, for the Rajasthan side. Um, I think we're really seeing the impact of missing Jofra Archer for Rajasthan. Um, yeah. Like they've not got that, you know, consistent bowler who can take wickets. I mean, he took 20 wickets in last year's campaign. Um, and, and, and yeah, missing out on, 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 on a bowler of, of Archer's class um, I think they are really going to struggle. And there was a, something came out this week saying that, you know, Archer wasn't expected to be rushed back into the IPL. So, yeah. again, one of my predictions from, from, from last week was, you know, completely off. But we move. <laughs> we move. What if you look at um, Mustafiza Rahman, who has been a really good bowler in the past. He played for Mumbai at one stage and was doing really well. Uh, and also Sunrisers. But he's he's definitely not as good as he was. And if you'd switch Archer in for um, the Fizz, as they call him, like he bowled four overs for 45, didn't take a wicket. Whereas if you take some of Archer's weaker performances from last year, you might get four overs for 35 with three wickets. And that's an immediate... And that's one of his worst performances, yeah. Yeah, and that's, that's an immediate influence, isn't it? And yeah, I think that would definitely uh, spice things up for the... I think you saw that desperation come out when um, when you look at the sheer amount of people that bowled. Mm, yeah. You know, obviously, it was a very fast wicket. So, you know, you could see Samson getting a bit desperate. But for eight different people to yeah. bowl, and three of which are leg spinners, you know, you, why not let a leg spinner start to get into it? You know, you can't have three different people bowling one over. It's just, yeah. you're not going to. I mean, uh, that's... yeah, to, to talk about that, Ben Stokes had one over in the power play and then got dismissed with, without scoring. And for a player of, you know, Ben Stokes' class, that's, you know, quite surprising. Not really being involved in the game too much at all. Did he get um, injured? I don't think he did. Well, I, I, I didn't watch all of them. That's what he did. Which he, was right. Yeah, when he, when he took the catch to get rid of Gale... Uh, he was off the field. That's I think that's why he didn't bowl because he did right. some. Yeah, he might have I mean, he 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 has been struggling with his bowling of late. Um, mm. But yeah, the choice to you know put on Shivam Dube for one over, and you know he went for 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 twenty runs. Maybe if you know Parag, who went for seven in his first over, had that over that Dube bowled and went for ten. I mean, that's ten more runs that they saved. That's the win for Rajasthan. So some questionable captaining, I think, from 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 um, Sanju Samson, especially he, as you say, to go to go to that many um, that many bowlers. It was um, his debut? It was right. debut. Yeah, it, it was his first time. So you know, and again, we're saying all this. We have to remember. I've said it to, twice. I'll say it again. It's the first you know four matches. We've only seen them all play once. They're gonna mould into what the way that their team is set up. Um, just one last note on 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 the uh, Punjab Kings bowling. Jai Richardson, even though you know he was quite expensive, um, I still think he showed a bit of promise. Like the delivery to remove Butler was oh. fantastic, um, taking out Butler's off peg, um, especially when Butler had come out and was 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 putting um, the bowlers to the sword. 
in his in his first few few balls. Um, yeah, I thought that was that was quite a promising thing. Um, the other thing I really liked from Punjab, and it's a he's going to be a one to watch for the rest of the season, I think. Deepak Huda, mm. yeah, he came from out of nowhere, and you know he smashed six sixes and four fours. Um, and yeah, so he he bumped they bumped poor and down the order by one, and they had Huda come in, um, which I was not that excited about to be honest. Last season he he looked unconvincing at best, but to have a guy you know a, a solid aggressive Indian batsman come in and be that destructive was a very very good thing. Well, you know they call him the Hurricane. Nice. That's, that's I people say who man. So <laughs> well, I just think like Punjab Kings. You mentioned um, uh, something I noticed about them because you mentioned Wazim Jaffa. He used to play for Royal Challengers back in the day. Anil Kumble, their head coach, used to captain Royal Challengers. Their top three: Gail, Agarwal, Rahul, all played for Royal Challengers. Uh, Chris Jordan, he played for them at one stage. I think there's over ten players who <laughs> used to play for all challenges. And then there was something else I noticed. Um, so here we go. S- spot the difference. <laughs> oh, <I don't laughs> the same <laughs> <laughs> What is going on? Red and gold for Punjab Kings. Uh, yeah, we are absolutely the RCB B team. But how amazing will it be when your RCB rejects win the title before you do? Oh, yeah. That's what I'm looking forward to. Probably going to happen. <laughs> <laughs> we'll All right. Well, should, should we call it a day there? Uh, yeah. yeah. Brilliant. Uh, thank you for listening, if you managed to make it the whole way through. Um, we've really enjoyed it. Um, we will talk again very soon, I'm sure. Um, if you like what you heard, uh, don't forget to follow us on all social medias at Cricket Nerds Pod. Got it right. Got- um and also if you're on youtube um please subscribe and like and all that sort of good stuff um yeah thank you very much for listening and goodbye bye guys